I've loaded in a scene that has some hard edge geometry as well as an organic character, a human being right here, to look at the document display controls and why we would want to engage some of these controls and what it means and something else we'll be doing as we get into a little bit of area rendering and things like that. By default, the program opens up the best look available for the system you have, which is down here in the lower left hand corner. That is the texture shaded mode. It considers all the lights in the scene, it casts shadows, it lets you see all the colors, and you might think this is an ideal way to always interact with your scene. But we've got some other options here that are worth considering and will help set up scenes and define areas and space a little more easily than working in this full preview mode. There's another reason you may want to do this, that as you add more and more content to your scene, more characters, if you happen to work with organics like trees, things like that that are very, very dense and complex in terms of the geometry that makes them, it can really bog down your system and make maneuvering through your system, even with all the keyboard shortcuts for cameras, somewhat of an arduous task. Just happens to be the shaded right here, the silhouette. Now, this is important if you happen to be working with video and you want to see exactly maybe what an alpha channel is going to look like for the scene. So there's real pragmatic reasons we have all these variations right here. We've got the outlines, which is the next most simplest. And this is confusing to look at to a degree in terms of the fact that we've got this mess of lines that is overlapping. Well, we're going to come back and deal with some of these areas over here in more specifics. But to deal with the wireframe or the outline type of modes we work with, we've got a feature right here in the document display called depth queuing. Now, when I roll my mouse over it, instead of having a consistent display right here, we have to go to the top of the screen which updates dynamically to anything we do right inside the document window. I'm going to enable depth queuing by clicking and turning it on. Right now, if it's off, we get to see all three of these little spheres equally. But if I turn it on, the further away they get from the camera, the more they fade. The difference in our scene is that these lines that are further back, like the top of the engine nacelle here, fade away a little bit so you can see what is closer to you. Let me go ahead and come to the wireframe mode, and it becomes even more apparent here. One of the reasons to use a wireframe mode is that, of course, the system doesn't have to render all the textures, but it is also an excellent diagnostic tool if you're trying to figure out, okay, where are the densest meshes in my scene? If I'm maneuvering around and I'm happy with where they are, which ones can I turn off? You'll probably have a fairly good intuitive sense of which ones those are, but this lets you confirm that for sure. The wireframe mode shows you all the wireframes in the scene. It sees through objects. It's like super x-ray. If you don't want that level, and typically I don't, I'll go to the next mode, which is hidden line. What it does is only reveals the lines on the surfaces facing the camera. Much easier to see the scene, and this is an easy way to go ahead and maneuver around your scene. So if we use our camera control and maneuver around here a little bit, we get a good sense of space. The ground floor or plane receding into the background kind of fades away. Again, if I turn off the depth cueing, everything lights up to the same. So that's just a nice way to work with that. We'll come back to dealing with, well, if I don't want to see everything in brown, what can I do about that? And we'll deal with that in an upcoming movie. But some of the other items we want are for testing things like light in your scene, where we have the lit wireframe or the flat shaded is a great way to go ahead and look at the density of light in your scene, where it's the brightest, where it's darkest, without being confused with the colors or textures on the scene. That's important because sometimes, especially if we engage those higher end functions of Poser, where we're working with global illumination, we don't get necessarily a fair view of where all the lights are because it's doing extra light calculations. So for setting and qualifying the base lights in the scene using this flat shaded view or the flat line view, excellent way to go with that. The nice thing is, is that you'll notice we've got some transparency in the scene and the program is very good about rendering that out to let you see that. We can pop into the other more simple type of cartoonish type of displays, not to be confused with the new cartoon render mode that we have, but just flipping through these, really it's whichever one works best for you at the specific time. But there are reasons to go ahead and engage wireframe to qualify light, to look where things are oriented in 3D when you're working through a single space. Just nice, convenient tools to use.